Hey, what's going on? Quick question here from uh, my Fortnite internship video. Creator Red A asks, what has it been like interfacing with the production team at different studios, tools and people wise? I heard you mention Confluence and I assume Jira goes with that. Yeah, totally. Um, so Jira and Confluence are probably the most common tech stacks I've seen behind the production of AAA game development. Confluence is basically like Wikipedia where you're gonna be writing long form content. So if there's gonna be a guide for something or somebody wants to um, talk about a roadmap or a plan, that's gonna be in Confluence. And then Jira is a little bit like a to-do list. It's a task-based um, system. And so that's more for like short form content. Something like, hey, this is a problem in the game and we need you to fix it, or here's this new feature and often what they'll do is they'll say like this is the new feature and these are the different sections but if you want the full details on implementation then that's when they'll link to the confluence so it, it's usually a, a mix of the two that, that gets the job done I've seen other teams um, work with other technologies but when it comes to AAA it's almost always those two I'm thinking uh, there was this indie game that was pretty popular I forget the name that had a public Trello board and so you could see sort of what they were working on. I think that was published by Anna Perna. I can't remember right now though. Um, and then there was also that game, what's the, there's the game with the water where you go underwater, it's called like, uh, <laughs> man, I should have looked this up before, but there's, there's another game which like publicly tracks tickets and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, generally it's a ticket-based system. So in game development, it's almost always agile. And so Agile is just a way of going about solving problems in software development. There are different flavors of Agile, and I've seen both Kanban and uh, um, Scrum used, right? So this is from the, uh, the military. Uh, great book on that, by the way. Um, and so Kanban is this methodology of Agile designed around this idea of a steady flow of tickets that really never end. That's sort of the idea with Kanban. So what that might look like is, for example, in game development, that's often like a central tech team. So if it's like, hey, I need you to get me a Visual Studio license, or hey, I can't log into my computer, or hey, I'm having trouble with the ethernet connection, right? These are like issues that are people are always gonna be facing on the development team. Someone's always gonna need a new keyboard, a new chair, or something like that, right? And so that is, uh, the central tech will often be on a Kanban system because it, 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 it fits that. And then the, the production team, which is where I usually work, whether it's in tools engineering or gameplay engineering, we have milestones in place. So it's not like a rolling series of tickets. Instead, it's more like, hey, here are the tickets we're gonna assign to this sprint. And that's where the sprints come in, right? So um, Scrum is a sprint-based system. and. You ha if you're gonna have milestones like a prototype or an MVP or uh, certification and stuff like that, that's where um, some Scrum methodologies will come into play. And so who sort of is in charge of managing that, right? So I think they say, uh, man, I forget, there, there's a lot of great research on this and, and I forget the exact names, but there's, there's a specific number, I think it's around 94, where if you have 94 people on a team, more than that, the organization begins to split in two which is, a, it's a, it's, I could talk about this forever, but um, let, me, let me walk back for a second. So when we're talking about tasking for a team, after I think it's five people, it's another one of those numbers, you, you really need to get somebody who's a producer, right? And so we've seen some teams in AAA really struggle against that, right? So um, Naughty Dog from the PlayStation first party fame is kind of infamous, right, for not having any producers on their team. And what does it mean to not have a producer on your team? It doesn't mean that no production's getting done. No, that's not what it means at all, right? It means that everybody's doing production, or at least it's being split across people who would otherwise be doing other things. And um, generally, I, I think, I, I've seen some amazing producers. Uh, Manticore Games had a really strong producer, James. Um, I've seen producers who are not great. Um, and I think everybody is a little bit different. I, I've been lucky to have really good producers in my career. Um, there's only been a few producers who I've like not really agreed with, 
and they were never at any point my producer. So I think that's good because you really need your producer to be your best friend because they're the person. Because in in game development, or uh, I don't know if it may extend to software engineering, uh, Bungie has this really nice methodology where they say, you know, you've got three sort of touch points. You are the coder, and then you have somebody who is your mentor. And a mentor is somebody who sort of wants to see your career progression long term. They want to make sure that you're working on projects that are challenging you and that you're learning the kind of things that you're passionate about, building up a skill set to be a really valuable asset for the team. The next person is your manager. The manager is in charge of evaluating your work and uh, determining whether or not you are on pace relative to his team. Often a manager is going to be tasked with features and then they're going to be in charge of making, sh making sure to manage the people who are going to be in charge of that, right? So for example, when I was working on, uh, well, let, let's say I'm, I'm working on this new combat ability, then my manager might be the guy who's in charge of all the abilities for the game. And so he's going to be managing me who's doing the combat ability and managing somebody else who's doing movement traversal abilities, stuff like that. And then you have sort of this, this third person who's very important in your life, which is your producer. And your producer is in charge of sort of allocating tasks from that manager and uh, you know, making sure that you, you always have enough work on your plate and at the same time that you're not overloaded. And tr also, I think they're in charge of sort of managing your emotional state to some degree, or at least good producers are, are always apt to do so. And so B Bungie has this philosophy that like those three should always be or should be separated when possible because um, – there's, there's benefits to doing so. But usually in your job, you'll have a lot of them, a lot of those like roles will be fulfilled by the same person. So for example, at, uh, well, okay, so for in, when I worked at Sony Santa Monica on the God of War Ragnarok, I had an engineering manager. I had a, uh, so, so he, he was just in charge of like my career stuff. I had a boss who was in charge of like my coding and we do my code reviews. And then I had a producer who didn't know how to code, but was in charge of making sure I got my work done on time. So those were like three different people. However, in my current job, I'm working on uh, Call of Duty Warzone. My boss is my producer, my manager, and my boss. So he's in charge of helping me with my long-term progression and also helping me um, get my work done on time and also figuring out what kind of work I'm going to do, right? So this guy is doing all three things, which can be awesome if you really like somebody, right? But if you have somebody who you're not resonating with and they fulfill those three roles, that can be a little bit of an issue. So um, as, as they, Bungie has a really good philosophy of that, honestly. I think Bungie's a little ahead of the curve um, and it is very engineering led, that company. That's another thing you'll, you'll see with respect to how these companies vary in production methodologies, it's it's interesting because you won't notice this when you're working on the team. You can't, in a sense. But you'll notice it when you leave a given team. And that is how that team prioritizes the different tent poles of game development, be they gameplay, um, or maybe that maybe I should say design, art, narrative and programming where narrative and design are almost always just considered one thing and those sort of four different things of course we always uh marketing is the last one but that's really not a factor in production um those four different uh disciplines have different seniority in different companies and it has a huge impact on how the game is made and sort of how decisions get made within the company. So, for example, um, well, you could look at, uh, you could look at, um, so for example, if you look at Sony Santa Monica's recent game, God of War, you can look at that game's uh, new documentary, right, Raising Kratos, and you can read the subtext there of where the priorities were and sort of how influences sort of shuck out, right? Because there was definitely some rumbles on that team. This guy, uh, the creative director, lost his art director like in the middle of the project, which is a mess. And then he finished the game and half his engine team left, right? So that's, that's the result of a rumble. Um, and so 
you know, the, the, those rumbles are going to happen all the time on a game to Anthem is probably another example to look at Anthem from uh, from EA uh, at Bioware. Right. So that's another rumble where it's like you look at the um, you look at that studio from the outside and it's obvious what's going on and, and, and some of the situations that happen there. But when you're in the, the studio, I think it's, it's a lot less apparent. You know, it, it's sort of like. It's, it's, it's sort of like, you know, you work at this restaurant and it's like, this is how we make the pasta. And you don't know other ways to make the pasta until you go to another restaurant. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think there's a lot to talk about there. But probably probably the, the simplest way to state it is just there's always different priorities with respect to those four, right? So a, a studio like, um, well, a, a studio like, Naughty Dog is going to be known for being very design heavy, whereas a studio like Epic Games, which is like at the same time maintaining one of the largest third party, um, if not the largest third party game engines at the same time, uh, that studio is going to be extremely tech heavy. And that's going to have a huge impact on, on how production decisions get made. So I'd be mindful of that. And then I think the other, the last factor, and this is probably one of the most important factors for determining what a production schedule looks like is whether or not you're on a live game or a installment game or I guess like a like a mile I don't know how to say this but like if you're on a live service game like Call of Duty Warzone it's a very different production schedule than if you're on a game like a Call of Duty Black Ops where one has to be released every three years uh, and it has a very strict deadline and people will crunch to make that happen more so on a single player experience than in a multiplayer experience where it's sort of like always ongoing, right? And there's also this threat, right? We, we spread these Kotaku articles about um, the ever ongoing crunch at uh, our friends um, Epic Games for Fortnite. Uh, there, there's also this, this threat at the same time, right? But they have a, a schedule where they have to constantly be releasing new content. And how are they gonna do that? And, and are they gonna be clever? in releasing the content installment wise slowly the slow drip right giving influencers a lot of time to pour over each new piece right i think one of the best production schedules i saw for that was fortnite creative where their community was really starved for content like they were really not happy they were like man give us new content and the fortnite creative team actually did a really great job with a pretty small amount of personnel to create just enough to have one little release each you know week or every two weeks where it's like they'd create one or two new items that people could use in their maps and the creative community would be held over just a little bit for the next installment which i think worked out way better than if they had just given all the assets they had at once and then spent another month in the dark you know um no man's sky hello game style uh waiting until they had the next release to say uh, there's certainly a philosophy oh, well okay we can talk about that later Okay, so that, I think that, that answers the question, hopefully. If it doesn't, leave me a question. I, I'd be happy to uh, answer in the comment section below. Tools, people-wise. People-wise. Yeah, people-wise, your producers are your best friend. You know, It's really important to have a good relationship with them. Um, it's important to have a good relationship with everybody on the team. I mean, who doesn't want to be everybody's friend, you know? I think... It, I think um, Unfortunately, when, when these tough decisions get made, though, it can really rub some people the wrong way because, you know, everybody wants to see their feature in the game, and, and it's really hard to make that happen sometimes. And you might have a good idea for the game, and everybody on the team might say, yeah, this is a good idea. So it's, like, legit a good idea, but it just might not have the – we might not have the bandwidth to put it in, you know, or maybe not this year, you know, or maybe not this cycle, right? And so then it's, like, sort of a – a debate about whose idea comes first and and it, it can be you know I understand how people can get emotional about those things because people care about the games you know people really care about this stuff okay I, I think that answers the question let me know if it doesn't and thanks for watching I appreciate your support